If you just close your eyes and block your ears to the Dude, what are you doing? We're gonna have time for this intro. Cut to the video quickly, quickly, quickly! See, John was in the middle of the Jordan River, baptizing people, and he was utterly insane. And Jesus said, I want to be baptized too, do it now. And John baptized Jesus, and he went on a four-day camping trip in the desert. Yay! Then he got a bunch of disciples, Simon and Andrew, James and John, and they started following him around. And he taught the synagogues and cast out a demon, even though they don't exist. You'd think the omniscient creator of the whole entire universe would have known that. And Jesus said, what do you want? And the demon's possessed man said, well, you see what I want is. And Jesus said, quickly, quickly, quickly. And he said, cast out this demon. And Jesus told the demon, bugger off. And the demon buggered off. And Jesus got famous. And Jesus healed a bunch of people. He kept crowding around him. And he had to keep on his feet. So let's all keep it on our feet and keep the story going. On to the next chapter. Move, move. And Jesus preached in a room, and some dudes wanted the friend healed, so they tore up the roof and lowered him down. And Levi was sitting at the table collecting taxes. What a pathetic government stooge. Look at Jesus eating with publicans and sinners. And Jesus told them a rather quick story about bridegrooms, garments, and wine bottles, and basically, he said nothing about carpentry. And his disciples picked the ears of corn on the Sabbath day, and the Pharisees told him, they can't do that. And Jesus said, yes, they can, because I'm in charge here. And Jesus healed a withered hand on the Sabbath day and made the Pharisees mad at him. And he went to the seaside, and a bunch of people followed him. And he healed a bunch of people, but told them not to say anything for no apparent reason. And he became a mountain man and had 12 followers who were listed as follows. Simon, Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, another guy named James, Thaddeus, and another guy named Simon. Oh, and Judas, that traitorous bastard. And Jesus was accused of colluding with the devil. And Jesus said, the house divided against itself cannot stand. And Abraham Lincoln said, hey, that's my line. And the disciples said, hey, look, your mother. And Jesus said, all y'all are my mother. And the disciples said, that doesn't make any sense at all. And Jesus said, ignore it. Keep going to the next chapter. And a bunch of people falling back to the seaside, so he crawled into a boat to talk them out in the water. And he told them a quick story about a farmer selling seeds any which way he wanted, on the wayside, the stony ground among thorns, and on good ground. Once again, there was no story about carpentry. And Jesus and his disciples got on the boat and sailed across the lake. But Jesus was tired and took a nap. Then there was a mighty storm which tossed the little boat this way and that, which tends to make a person even more tired. And the disciples got scared, but Jesus just waved his hand and the storm went away, and they sailed off into the next chapter. And there was an unclean man sitting in the graveyard, and Jesus said, All you demons, go possess that pigsty over there. Go, go, go. And Jairus grabbed a hold of Jesus and said, Hurry up and come over here, because my daughter is dying. And Jesus said, Finally, another person in the story moving with a sense of freaking purpose. Let's go. But some random woman grabbed him by the hem of his robe, and Jesus said, Do you mind, woman? This robe is brand new. But the woman tried to make some excuses about having some unspecified history of blood for 12 years, and that it was now healed. And Jesus said, Great, you're healed, now bug her off. But the daughter of Jairus was supposedly dead, but Jesus said she was only sleeping. To prove it, Jesus went to her bed, shook her by the shoulders, and said, Wake up! The girl then woke up, sat on the bed, and said, Bloody hell, what's the girl got to do to take a nap around here? And Jesus said, There will be time enough to rest when you're dead. Time to go. And Jesus ran away and came to the next chapter. And Jesus taught in the synagogue, and all the people wondered why the son of a carpenter kept talking about agriculture. And Jesus sent his twelve disciples out to preach, and they told him to only take a staff with them, no script, no bread, money, and they'd better only take a pair of sandals and only one cloak. Heal the sick, cast out demons, and shake the dust out of the feet if they think you're crazy, and kick you out. Now get going! And there was an interpolation about the beheading of John the Baptist. BORING! And a bunch of people gathered around Jesus, and Jesus said, Bugger off the whole bloody lot of you. And the people said, We're hungry. And they searched around for food and found five loaves and two fishes. Jesus started dividing this up among the 5,000 people. Somehow there was more left over after they had eaten than when they started. And his disciples went into a boat for no apparent reason, and there was a great storm. Wait a minute, didn't this already happen? Oh, wait, this story is slightly different. Never mind. And Jesus walked on the water, but the disciples thought it was a ghost, but it wasn't a ghost, it was Jesus. Yay! And they continued sailing around right into the next chapter. Get there! And his disciples were eating, but oh, they didn't wash their hands first. That's worse than eating dinner without saying grace. What were they thinking? And Jesus told them another story, still nothing about carpentry, involving the Old Testament laws, which had absolutely nothing to do with washing one's hands. Didn't Jesus, who was supposedly the omniscient almighty creator of the universe, know about the germ theory of disease? Then a Greek woman came up to Jesus. Oh, a non jewish woman talked to Jesus. That can't possibly be right. A woman asked for a dog to be healed, and Jesus called her a dog. Actually, that one was real. Jesus ignored her because she was the wrong ethnic minority. What a wonderful religion you got there, isn't it? A man came up to him who was deaf and had a speech impediment. Jesus spit on him and ran away to the next chapter. And Jesus fed 4,000 with seven loaves, just like the last time he performed that same miracle. And the Pharisees wanted to sign, and Jesus didn't give them one, which directly contradicts the other Gospels. Oops! And Jesus gave them another parable about food that made absolutely no sense. Still no story about carpentry. They brought a blind man to him. Jesus spit on him, too. What's with Jesus and spitting on people all the time? And Jesus pressured the disciples to make a decision about who they thought he was, even though they had lacked sufficient evidence to come to any suitable conclusion. Just like today! And the disciples were confused beyond all get-out, and wandered into the next chapter! And Jesus promised that some of his disciples will not die before the second coming. Somehow he said that little lie with a straight face. We're still waiting 2,000 years later. 
And Jesus was transfigured, and his disciples saw Elias and Moses. And they brought a boy who had a dumb spirit, and Jesus said, This wouldn't happen if we had better schools. And the disciples had Jesus, who was the greatest of them, and Jesus said, Act like the little children. And his disciples complained, because that made no bloody sense at all. And Jesus told them to cut off their hands and gouge out their eyes. Then he ran away and went to the next chapter. And Jesus talked about divorce, which has a girl to do with carpentry. And they brought little children so Jesus could touch them. And the Catholic priest started taking notes. And a man asked about getting eternal life. And Jesus started listening to the ten suggestions, but apparently forgot half of them. Then he told the dude to sell all of his possessions and give to the poor. Seriously, have the Pentecostalists never read their own freaking Bible? And Bartimaeus was blind and wanted to be healed. Strangely enough, Jesus didn't spit on him. And he followed Jesus into the next chapter. And Jesus told his disciples to go into town to get a colt. Other gospels say it was a donkey. Which one was it? And the disciples asked if he was sure about this one. Jesus said, You've already violated the Sabbath. You might as well steal too. And if anybody asked, bear false witness and run away. And Jesus entered into Jerusalem and people threw tree branches at him. That seemed to be the most appropriate thing to do at the time. And there was a fig tree that had no figs on it. Jesus told it to die, so it did, which violates absolutely everything we know about botany. And the people asked Jesus questions, so he gave them confusing rounding answers. That made no sense at all. That must be where Ray Comfort and Kirk Cameron learned about theological debates. And Jesus told them to bugger off so he can get into the next chapter. And Jesus told stories about vineyards, taxes, inheritance, marriage, Old Testament scriptures, and tithing, all of which have bugger all to do with carpentry. And when the people weren't looking, he ran off to start the next chapter. And his disciples said, Hey, look, a temple! And Jesus said, The Romans will destroy the temple, proving that this book was written after 70 CE. And there will be Antichrist wars, famous desolations, and stars will fall out of the sky, even though that is physically impossible. Seriously, wouldn't the omniscient creator of the entire universe know that? And Jesus continued, Stay over there! I'm going to the next chapter! It was a Passover Seder, and some unidentified woman didn't know what it said, and she definitely was not a prostitute. And Jesus, mm, that right bloody bastard, was so fed up with Jesus going around spitting on people that he betrayed them to the chief priests. And it was the Passover Seder. Wait, what? Didn't they just have the Passover Seder? Uh, never mind. And they went to eat the Last Supper. Again, in some dude's house who was apparently so unbloody important that he isn't even mentioned by name. And Jesus said, one of you will betray me. And this shows that Jesus must have been a prophet because he told his disciples something that already happened. And Jesus said, Eat my flesh, even though cannibalism is pagan in origin and directly contradicts the commandments in the Old Testament. And drink my blood, even though that also breaks the commandments of Yahweh, so that you can all become vampires. And Peter said, I will never leave you. And Jesus said, Oh, yes, you will. And they went to the gardens to pray, but they all fell asleep, and they were ambushed by the high priest, led by Judas the betrayer. And Peter said, I'm leaving now. And Jesus said, I told you so. And they took him to the high priest who accused him of blasphemy, which was a very serious crime in those days. Today, well, not so much. I blame South Park and Family Guy. Anyway, they sent Jesus to Pilate, whose palace was located in the next chapter. And Pilate said, Hey, look over there, the king of the Jews. Oh, hell, I used to give a prince to come and see during Easter. So how's about I release Jesus? But the people wanted Barabbas and said, and Pilate said, What about the king of the Jews? And the people said, Crucify him. And Mel Gibson said it was certainly the fault of the Jews, and nobody else at all whatsoever had anything to do with the crucifixion. Emphasis on the word fiction. Oh, and I do a bunch of jokes about the crucifixion itself, but even I found that to be in bad taste. Suffice it to say that since Jesus never actually existed, the crucifixion never took place. Anyway, Jesus kicked the bucket and was resurrected three days later in the next chapter. Mary, another Mary who was also not a prostitute, and some woman named Salome, came to the tomb, and a young man, definitely not an angel, told him, You're looking for Jesus in Nazareth. Well, Tuff took us on that one, because uh, the city of Nazareth did not exist during this time frame. And Jesus appeared to a bunch of people, but everybody thought they were insane. And they were right! And he allegedly appeared to his disciples, but only a level of them. It doesn't say which one was missing. Seriously, the book of Mark said that Peter denied Christ, and never specified what happened to Judas. Anyway, and Jesus told them, Go into all the world and baptize everybody that you see, holding their heads down and under the water until they really repent. And you will cast out devils even though they don't exist. You will pick up snakes who will bite you and you will die. And you will drink poison and also die. And you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover after you take them to the hospital to receive proper medical treatment. And you will ignore all objections that this entire religion is based upon an act of human sacrifice in first century seeing Palestine. And never mind that none of this entire book stupid stands up to the, even the slightest scrutiny, nor comports to any historical, archaeological, or scientific evidence. So take it all in faith. Now, bugger off! 